everyone, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. I am really excited because today is going to be a video that is a second part in a series that I have been making and that is fantasy romances that I want to read. So if you haven't watched my first video in that series, go check it out. I'll link it above and down below. Basically, fantasy romance is a subgenre that I have been really getting into lately. If you think of the books like a Court of Thorns and Roses and From Blood and Ash. Those are kind of the books that started me on this journey and it's this niche where there are a lot of books that are independently published through the Amazon publishing program and whatnot, maybe not taking the most traditional means and a lot of these books fall in the new adult age range as well. So that's kind of all the things that have drawn me towards this because as someone that is both a fantasy reader and a romance reader, I really like it when these two genres blend together. And my own personal interpretation of fantasy romance and what that genre definition is is it is a romance set in a fantasy setting where the main plot is the romance and the rest of the fantasy elements falls more of a subplot whereas maybe a fantasy with romance <laughs> which is, you know it's just the wording would be a fantasy plot where you know whatever sort of conflict they are facing is the main plot and the romance is more of a subplot. So if you think of something like A Court of Thorns and Roses, you'll see that Feyre's romantic adventures are kind of the things that the plot centers around and so that's why I would classify it as more of a fantasy romance. Um, as well as From Blood and Ash, the same thing kind of happens and so I have set out on this journey to read and find a bunch. I have read a few here and there from my first video and some that I have am going to include in this video. I haven't been reading them like straight through or anything like that because there are other genres that I want to read in the meantime but I'm hoping by like the end of the year that I will get through a majority of these 20 books that I've listed in between this book, this video and the last one, and then I can do some sort of like big general wrap up on my thoughts of all the ones that I'm recommending. But here I am to, you know, present a list of the ones that I found and that sounded the most intriguing from my research on the internet so that you don't have to go digging yourself for some recommendations. Play the TikTok here. I do this for my squad, I do this for my guy. I do this for my squad, I do this for my guy. Yeah, so this is fun and I will probably be continuing to make these recommendation videos for this genre in the future just because I have been loving it so much. Also a quick note before I go into this video is that most of these books are going to be adult romances so this video is for 18 plus audiences only and yeah just please don't interact if you are uncomfortable with this kind of content. And for every book, um, if I know of any potential triggers, I will say, but I, since I haven't read them, it's hard for me to capture everything. So please, if you are interested in these titles but have triggers that could potentially affect you, look up the triggers. I have noticed four independently published books that a lot of times on Amazon and on Goodreads, the description will include the triggers, which is great. And I appreciate that. And some of these books have been sent to me by the authors themselves and so like anytime that is what happened I will let you know if I like bought it myself or if it was provided to me by an author just for transparency. So without that let's get into it and I'm gonna start off with the two on this list that I have already read. So we are starting off with Queen of Empire by H.R. Moore and H.R. Moore was kind enough to send me a copy of her book. This is the first in the Relic trilogy. The second and third books are called Temple of Sand and Court of Crystal. This book is available on Kindle Unlimited. Anita has never been ordinary. She has won every single physical challenge she has been entered in because she is a body in a world where you can be a body, mind, or spirit, and so she's extremely talented in all things physical. So when the powerful, good-looking descendants, who are the rulers of each of the three factions, Marcus and Alexander, come to town, Anita immediately captures their attention. Once an empire, the sudden death of the ruling body descendant creates a spiral of events. A quest for the treacherous mind ruler to find the hidden girl the ruling body descendant had tried to hide from the world, a challenge where Anita stands out more vibrantly than she ever has before, and a perilous dip in the world's energy in a world where the crops and natural events and everything depend on the collective 
energy and emotions of the population. Powerful factions form within the ruling elite and Anita finds herself in the middle of the conflict. You can see my February wrap up for more of my in-depth thoughts on this book, but I did enjoy it. And H.R. Moore actually was the organizer of Pharaoh Feb, which is Fantasy Romance Feb, which was a fantasy romance read-along. And through that read-along, I got to kind of see more fantasy romance authors and learn more about the genre just in general. So that was a really great readathon. I had a really fun time participating in it. I'm pretty sure they're planning it again for 2022. So please go check out their Instagram. Link it here. I will say for this one, um, and I can only say this for the books that I have read because obviously I won't know if I haven't read them, but like the spice level in this one is relatively low, especially compared to the other ones on this list. That doesn't mean that it's like bad or anything like that. It's just that so the in the fantasy romance genre, the spice will range. So I would give this like a one pepper out of five peppers. The next book I have read on my handy dandy Kindle, which I love this thing and I need to get back to reading more on it because I have not read on it in quite a while, but I do adore it. And that is Flames of Chaos by Amelia Hutchins. So Flames of Chaos is the first in the Legacy of the Nine Realms series, which consists of Flames of Chaos, Ashes of Chaos, Ruins of Chaos, and Crown of Chaos. At this point in time, the first three books are out and the fourth book is yet to be released. I'm currently in the middle of the third book and <laughs> it is losing me a little bit, but I do want to try and like push through and finish it. But I've just like been distracted, which is how life goes sometimes. This one is 99 cents on Kindle at the moment so i think that's a sale go check it out if this intrigues you Arya and her sisters are the granddaughters of hecate who is the queen of witches also a quick note before i go into this video is that most of these books are going to be adult romances so this video is for 18 plus audiences only and yeah just please don't interact if you are uncomfortable with this kind of content and for every book, um, if I know of any potential triggers, I will say, but I, since I haven't read them, it's hard for me to capture everything. So please, if you are interested in these titles but have triggers that could potentially affect you, um, look up the triggers. I have noticed for independently published books that a lot of times on Amazon and on Goodreads, the description will include the triggers, which is great and I appreciate that. They return to the human realm of Havenfall, which is connected to the rest of the Nine Realms and kind of like the meeting point between the human world and the rest of the world to find Arya's twin who has mysteriously gone missing. They soon discover that things in Havenfall have changed quite drastically since they had last been there. And the most drastic change is Nox, who has come in and established himself as king in the witch's absence. Sparks fly as Arya and Nox engage in a fiery battle of wills. As Arya learns that she's so much more than just a witch in the Hecate bloodline, which is a huge power and responsibility all on its own. Will Arya embrace her savage side to save her sister or will she burn to ashes from Nox's kisses? Nox himself has ulterior motives for being in Havenfall, but Arya completely upends his carefully laid plans. For this one, um, there's a lot of triggers, like there's just a lot of triggers, like sexual assault, like potentially consensual, non-consensual type things going on. And I will say this is probably the spiciest book I've ever read in my life. I will give it five little chili peppers. <laughs> um, I was kind of taken aback at the content in this book. If you were looking for just like dirty, filthy smut, like definitely check this one out. But also just be aware that it's definitely not for everyone. Like it's kind of like I enjoyed this just like for the pure entertainment factor. But um, you kind of have to set aside like your beliefs in reality like quite <laughs> a lot because there's just like a lot of toxic behavior um but for me like i'm fine reading about that as long as i can like compartmentalize in my mind that like this is not the real world and how like real people would act which is also why i think i can kind of read more about toxic relationships in fantasy settings than real life settings besides that like it, i'm so intrigued because the author started off the first book with this letter to the reader saying like you will not like Knox, but you will love him by the end and I'm like halfway through the third book and I'm starting to maybe like him, but I'm just like, I'm so hooked by this letter to the reader that's like, you will you will love him by the end. And I'm, I'm waiting for that to happen. I don't know how many books are going to be in this series because it's probably a long overarching theme, but like they are just constantly like at each other, definitely in enemies. They're, I wouldn't even call enemies to lovers, like enemies to lovers, but they're still enemies type stories. So if this intrigues you and you think that you can handle the very dark and toxic themes that exist within this world, give it a shot. 
So this next book I saw just while I was looking on Goodreads and I just like really love the cover. Something about like the color scheme just spoke to me and then I read the summary and I was very intrigued. So here it is and that is called The Moonfire Bride by Sylvia Mercedes and yeah I just like loved this cover so it spoke to me and I wanted to include it on this list. Valera is a seamstress who toils away to protect her little sister from the dangers of the fae forest. Then the fae come but for her and not her sister. Valera soon finds herself the unwilling bride of a powerful and mysterious Fey Lord, who tells her he won't harm her and will return her after a year and a day as long as she is to never look upon his face. Valera is completely intrigued and confused at this paradox that he presents. Will her burgeoning passion for this mysterious shadowy figure be her undoing? I, I just like I'm a sucker for like a good solid Fey romance and I'm really intrigued by like the fact that she can't see his face. I'm trying to think if that reminds me of a myth, but nothing particularly. It might be like a Greek written myth. I don't know, but the cover, it's beautiful. Sounds like a good old fae romance, which I'm a sucker for. A lot of these fantasy romance books do center around the fae. However, this next one centers around goblins, which it's not something that I have seen quite so often. So I was very intrigued. It is called Of Goblins and Gold by Emma Hamm, and this is the first in the Of Goblin Kings series. The second one is called Of Shadows and Elves, and the third one is Of Pixies and Spells. So I like that little rhyming that we have going on, it's cute. Freya knows the sound of goblin bells, knows to move to the side of the road and let them pass, and never, ever to buy their wares. And the most important rule, never ever make a deal. When Freya's sister takes a necklace and is kidnapped, Freya has no other choice but to journey to the realm of the Fae where the goblins reside and face the goblin king who's stolen her sister. The goblin king sets her forth tasks that she must perform in order to save her sister, but he will do anything but make it easy for her. And thus, their romance begins. Uh, I'm just like a sucker for the good old, like, task plotline, you know? It worked in Akotar and... I'm a sucker for it. Of Goblin and Gold is available on Kindle Unlimited. Okay, this next one is a book that I'm set to be buddy reading pretty soon with Maddie from Princess of Paperback. And that is A Touch of Darkness by Starlit Skin Claire. Again, on my handy dandy Kindle. This is going to be the, the Hades and Persephone series. And I've seen this book like all over. Book Twitter, TikTok especially. People seem to love it. And the series has A Touch of Darkness. A Touch of Ruin, A Touch of Malice, and the upcoming one is A Touch of Chaos. So yeah, and I think some of them are also from Hades' perspective, the later books, so love that. I'd love to see a flipped perspective. Persephone is the goddess of spring in title only. Every flower that she touches withers and dies. She's starting her life over in New Athens as a mortal journalist. Hades has built a gambling empire in the mortal world, and he is known to favor impossible bets. After a chance encounter, Hades and Persephone enter into an impossible gamble themselves. Persephone finds herself in a contract with the god of the dead. She must create life in the underworld or lose her freedom forever. I'm just a sucker for Hades and Persephone. I love that myth. I maybe guess that this one could be like also filed under like paranormal romance. I find that like it's kind of like very closely tied these two genres, paranormal romance, fantasy romance, but I decided to include this on this list because I feel like the gods are enigmatic. It could be could be either, you know? A Touch of Darkness is available on Kindle Unlimited. Okay, this next book I literally bought because of two reasons. The first one is that it is inspired by one of my favorite things one of my favorite stories. And the second of, is just like how gorgeous it is and it is Music of the Night by Angela J. Ford, which is number one in the T A Tower Nights Tale series. There is a second one coming out in next February, so a while away, called Song of the Dawn. And this is a standalone, so I think it will be a companion. If you can't tell, this is inspired by Phantom of the Opera and just look at this cover. It's so gorgeous. I love this trend of covers that look like this because it is everything to me and then if you take off the cover i mean this is this is really what sold me like do you see that do you see how pretty that is that is just amazing and the fact that it's inspired by the opera 
which is if you like don't know like family opera is literally one of my favorite things ever i'm just like completely obsessed with the soundtrack i got my dad obsessed with the soundtrack he's also a big family opera fan and we, we saw it together um and when i was in high school it's one of my favorite memories and i've seen it on broadway twice so like and i would go again like a million times if i could i just love it that much but that is a tangent <laughs> So this is a fantasy romance inspired by that original work. I will say this though, because we are on the topic of books, I tried to read the translation of the original Phantom of the Opera book in high school and I like DNF'd it. So like the original Phantom of the Opera like book, not for me, but the, the movie, the play, everything. A Haunted Tower, A Mysterious Instructor, and The Lore of the Music of the Night. Arya is left penniless after the death of her father and so she goes to become the award of a count in the town of High Tower. This town is very secluded and known for one thing only, it's Star Theater. Arya makes a deal. If she can manage to learn how to sing, the count will save her from an arranged marriage. When Arya stumbles across a mysterious man in a dark tower, she begs to learn the power of song from him. Although reluctant, the man agrees to teach her the music of the Arya begins to fall for her elusive instructor, despite his shadowy past. But something is awakening, stirred by its master's dark desires. Evening reveries become haunted with blood, gore, and murder. Rumors claim that the man in the tower is behind the murders, but Arya is loath to believe as she has just gained the desire of her heart. I mean, the fan of the opera vibes are just chef's kiss. So this next book is a bit of a funny story because very confused right now i went to grab it for the video and i literally can't find it anywhere and i like went through all my shelves like i'm losing my mind i know that i own this book i know that i bought it where is it and like i did rearrange my fantasy romance shelf i moved it from here over there but i still don't see the book like what it's, it's nowhere to be found and i didn't i didn't get rid of it so what So anyways, I'll just put up a picture here, but I'm just like bamboozled, perplexed. I mean, what happened? I just, I truly cannot find this book. And I, I searched other areas in my house like, what? where did it go? This series is called the Gods and Monsters series. And this one's interesting because it focuses on a main character that is a mother, which is not something that I've seen before in fantasy romance. The second book in the series is called The Fallen Queen and the third is called The Lightbringer and it is available on Kindle Unlimited. I ended up picking this one up, even though I can't find it right now, after I saw Becca and the Books do a fantasy romance shelf tour and I just saw this cover and I blacked out and bought it. Like it was so pretty. And that's why I'm so mad that I don't know where it is right now. <sighs> Anyways. When the plague begins, humanity's saviors are monsters. Jane is a sad young mother of two who is absolutely terrified when humanity faces doom. Yet, she's willing to do what her estranged husband is not, and that is get up and fight. David and his companions are absolute legends, but when humanity is facing their doom, they are compelled to come back to Earth and to humans in their time of need. With monsters seeking her out, a noble immortal knight showing her what love really is like, and a secret past she can't remember, Jane will embark on an epic adventure to save her family and save the world. Like I said, I thought that this was really cool that this focuses on a mother main character. Um, as I also saw a reverse harem tag, so that could potentially be something that happens, but I haven't read it, so I don't know. And again, the, just the art of the cover, that's pretty much all I needed to buy, even though it, it's gone now. <laughs> Gods and Monsters is available on Kindle Unlimited. This next series I was sent by the author. So thank you so much to Elizabeth Briggs for sending this my way. And that is Beauty in Darkness, which is the first in the Royal Heart series, um, as well as the sequel, Kiss of Snow. Princess Rose is forced to marry the handsome brooding wizard king Wraith of her kingdom's sworn enemy in order to end their years-long war. She's whisked away to a foreboding castle without the chance to even say goodbye to anyone. While she has always prepared herself for a political marriage, she did not expect it would be to her kingdom's mortal enemy. While there, she discovers that her new husband treats her more as a student of magic than an actual wife. King Wraith may have taken Princess Rose as a bride in order to end the war, but he's not interested in love since the death of his first wife. Rose defies him at every turn, but her beauty and boldness tempt him to open up his heart a second time. Rose soon discovers a dark secret 
secret looming in her new home which could potentially change the fate of both of their kingdoms forever it's just like a good, good little marriage of convenience trope that i absolutely love and we have a wizard wizards are very cool so Yes, thank you so much to the author for sending this again. I can't wait to read. And again, this is what they look like side by side. And I do think that this is a companion series that follows a different couple. This next book was also sent to me by the author, and that is Guild by Raven Kennedy, which is number one in the Plated Prisoner series. And this cool bookmark. So the second in the series is called Glint, and the third one is called Gleam. And this is a King Midas retelling, which is very interesting. Orin is King Midas's favored. He has a gold touch her, meaning that she has been turned to gold at his touch, and she is absolutely treasured, kept in a gilded cage. He saved her from poverty, and she is always grateful for his protection. She thinks that her life is perfect until one day an impending war sees King Midas striking a bargain. Suddenly, Arryn's trust is broken and everything that she knew about King Midas just might be wrong. And the tagline says, The myth of King Midas reimagined shows the dark side of greed through the eyes of the woman he gold touched. So, I, yeah, I just love this idea of a King Midas retelling and exploring the concepts of greed. Guild is available on Kindle Mode. And the last book that I have on this list was also sent to me by the author, and that is Feather by Olivia Wildstein. And I'm really excited about this one because it has to do with angels. And I got some prints when I reached out to the author. She sent them my way. And okay, I love this. Like, who would not be instantly intrigued? As you can see, we have some feathers going on here. And these are the people. I guess like artwork of them. So this is Lay. Lee. This is Lee. This is Celeste. This is Jared. And this is Asher. So what's great is I have these right here. I don't need to come up with people's faces in my brain, which I'm terrible at doing. I, I have these right here to tell me what they look like. And a fun fact on this postcard is that the story of Feather was born from its book cover, which the author purchased as a pre-made. And it inspired her angelic love story. That's really cool. The tagline is Romeo and Juliet with angels. It was supposed to be a quick mission for Lei, get in and get out. The only quick thing about it was how quickly she failed. With only a month left to earn her missing feathers, Lei journeys to Paris in order to take on the head of the Paris Mafia and one of the world's biggest sinners. If Leia can get Jared to accomplish a single act of kindness, she stands to win a hundred feathers, more than enough to complete her wings, and ascend to the land of Elysium, which is the land of angels. What she doesn't count on is Jared's dark charm causing her her feathers. She's dead set on saving him and he's dead set on destroying her, until he realizes that destroying her wings is also destroying her heart. A heart he longs to hear only beat for him. Okay, I loved that summary and like I love this cover. I'm like very intrigued by, by this artwork and just the concept of angels in general is something I always find myself drawn to in literature. I just think it's a really cool like dynamic that is not often employed. So yes, looking forward to this one and um, there are more in the series. The second book is Celestial, and the third book is Starlight, but it doesn't have a cover yet. And this is available on Kindle Unlimited. And so that is the conclusion of my second installment in this fantasy romance books I want to read video. I'm having so much fun researching these titles and making these videos makes me literally want to read like 10,000 books at once. It's like a problem. It's like my team yours and list now. I have even more genres that I want to read in. It's crazy. <laughs> So please let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you have thought about them or which on this list seems the most intriguing to you. I hope that you found this list helpful in helping you navigate the fantasy romance space. And if you made it this far, leave a little heart emoji in the comments. Have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.